My name is Scott Bronick, certified prosthetist with Bremer Prosthetics. And I'm Nate Capa, also a certified prosthetist with Bremer Prosthetics. And today we're here to talk about suspension of your prosthesis. We're gonna start by talking about suspension of a transtibial or below the knee prosthesis. Yep. And, and really the invention of the silicone liner. Sometime in the, around in the, the 90s, and I don't know if you know more about the timeline of that, Scott, but sometime in the 90s, they came out with uh, different types of silicones and what these do is these offer protection for your skin. They help to cushion things, but they also hold the prosthesis on. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, they were using leather and with straps or suspenders. Um, Belts. Yep. Uh, joints and corset that have like uh, on, a, on a knee brace, metal stays that would come up and then the corset would be there that would help to hold the leg on. Uh, all kinds of different things like that, which people would say compared to today's suspension, that may seem crude, but sometimes changing people out of those old suspension devices, if that's what they were used to, good luck. They didn't. Absolutely. <laughs> you couldn't so, tell mean, them that. They worked for them. At, they worked well for them at the time. There's a lot of people who've used a prosthesis for 30, 40, 50 years that when you try these newer things, it just doesn't feel right to them. So they've become so acclimated to the old way. It's important to still understand those and know how to build them. There'd really be extenuating circumstances that would cause us to pick something like that for somebody that's new. Yeah, I would say to younger prosthetists um, out there, you may be told, or I've heard people say, well, you don't need those anymore. If you get a seasoned amputee, sometimes you're better off not trying to change them. If, if what they have is working and they're not looking for a lifestyle change, you might be fighting a losing battle trying to change their suspension system. Absolutely. Um, also, like you said, extenuating circumstances with the joints and corset, rare circumstances where people can't tolerate distal end weight bearing. Right. That's a great way to suspend somebody in their BK socket where without something like the like the joints and corset, um, they may not be able to wear a prosthetic limb. Right, so, so when Scott says distal end weight bearing, he means pressure on the bottom, so hypersensitivity to even touch on the bottom. Another reason for maybe metal joints would be uh, knee instability. So if there's a knee injury that, that goes back and then, then an amputation occurs, sometimes that can help mm -hmm. also. I would say this, what, what I like to say, people talk about suspension or just as prosthetics evolve, uh, prosthetic designs, you know, you know, what's the best? I don't like the word the best at all. I say, anytime you know how to do anything, it's another tool in your toolbox. And the more of those that you have, uh, the better equipped you're gonna be to make the desi design the first, the perfect prosthetic limb that's gonna work for that individual. So, so a, a simple way for a below the knee for suspension is a silicone locking liner. And what the person would do is they would put their residual limb down in the bottom of the liner, and then they would roll the liner onto their limb. And then you can see that there's a pin that sticks out. So what's important here is when you're rolling the liner on, you're gonna get suction in between the liner itself and the residual limb. And the two things that cause skin breakdown in a prosthetic socket are friction and pressure. So obviously, if you've got three millimeters worth of gel here, um, you've got some padding, some protection if you have excessive pressure on the bone. Mm -hmm. But with that suction that you create inside of the gel liner and the residual limb, all the friction and the shear forces are on the outside of the liner, and there's no movement of the residual limb in the gel liner. Right. And so then the, the prosthesis has a small hole in the bottom. The, the pin aligns with that hole. Sometimes they... It makes a loud clicking sound. Other brands of attachment mechanisms don't make any sound. People like different kinds. Some people like to hear that feedback so that they know that their prosthesis is on and engaged. Um, some people don't like to because they don't like to wake up a spouse in the middle of the night if they have to put it on. Or as they're walking, sometimes they can make clicking sounds. Um, so they, they choose other um, quieter mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So that that holds everything on once that pin is engaged in the hole to take the prosthesis off, simply push and hold the button and it slides out. Roll the liner off your limb and then cleaning and washing the liner is important with any of the liners. Um, typically at the end of the day, washing it with soap and warm water will really help hygiene because these do trap perspiration and moisture right up next to your skin. Uh, some of the advantages of this system are once the patient or individual, like anything else, one of the difficulties is going to, is going to be donning the liner consistently. 
where the placement of this pin is, is going to show, or if, if it does, if it's off to the side and you're trying to get it down inside the prosthetic socket and you can't see in there once your limb is going in there and you're hitting the side, it can be frustrating when you're trying to learn how to don the prosthetic limb. Once they can consistently manage this um, and with those audible clicks, it, it's just, patients get a lot of security knowing that once their limb is in there and once it's in the shuttle lock, that it's locked. And that's, that's what people like about this system. I would say things you've got to watch for depending on how active you are on the prosthetic limb. So we have this anchor point now, which is where, so all of the suspension, the residual limb is distally inside of the socket. So, and this is where things to look for, if your residual limb changes in size and every liner, uh, even though there's different manufacturers, they have their own size sizing guidelines. They're very important. If the uh, gel liner is too big, and you see how this, you're gonna get this elongation anyway, the better the umbrella is or the better, it, it's really more so how it fits to the individual, um, but we wanna avoid this. We don't wanna milk soft tissue down in there, but if your residual limb is reduced in size and this umbrella is bigger, that's something to keep an eye on. So if you notice a lot of perspiration, moisture inside of there, if you notice that movement in there, uh, definitely see your process because there are some things to consider or to look at. Right, and as Scott was saying, one of the drawbacks is that even when things are fitting well, the prosthesis is only hanging on from this pin at the very yeah. bottom. So every time you pick up, there's going to be some elongation, some lag. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, the term is pistoning inside of the socket. That pistoning is really just inefficiency. Now, some people with a firm musculature limb may not, they may not notice that. They might be able to control that, mm -hmm. really hold things in place and keep it from doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a softer limb or soft tissue soft distal tissue, to the tibia. Yep, yep, lots of soft tissue at, below the cut end of your bone. This system um, really may cause a, a lot of maybe feeling like you don't have good control of your prosthesis mm -hmm. when you're walking. So at that point, we would choose something like this, which is called the silicone cushion liner. The really, the only difference between these two is that this one doesn't have a pin on the bottom. This is a different manufacturer than this, but it would be, you'd put it on the same way, roll it on, make sure that the bottom of the, of the liner is contacting your, your residual limb. And once that's on, then there's an external suspension sleeve. And I would say this liner in particular, the gel is made out of a mineral oil or a mineral oil base where this is a medical grade silicone. Some liners are made out of urethane, so there are different properties. Um, with the medical grade silicone in these, these are things that obviously people aren't highly allergic to, but things can happen. So if there's skin irritation and things like that, that could also be a reason to use a different type of liner and why it's nice to have more than just one choice. Right. So with the sleeve suspension, what would happen is once the liner is, has been donned, you'd slide your residual limb into the socket. Now, one benefit to this is that there's not a pin to line up. So it's very easy to slide your limb into the socket. That's gonna be nice and repeatable. It's gonna happen quickly and, and the same every time. Once that's done, then you roll the sleeve up onto your thigh. And so this sleeve is now, this sleeve on your thigh is now what holds the prosthesis on in place. Mm -hmm. So a real benefit to this is that you see there's so much more surface area that's being used to hold the prosthesis mm -hmm. on and plus it's up higher. So instead of being held by the very bottom with like the pin, this is being held up top. So it's gonna reduce that pistoning in the socket. It's really gonna improve the, the coordination and the feedback that you get from your prosthesis. Um, to so, improve that even more, we often add a one-way valve to the socket. This allows air to expel the sleeve acts as a seal up on your thigh so that no air can move through the socket so that there's suction so that when, when you're moving, this really has a positive mm -hmm. movement with you. Yes. So as the air expels, negative pressure builds inside of the socket. So where we were talking about with this type of liner and this pin, the only linkage that you have in the socket and the residual limb is right here at the bottom. Once with the air expelling and when you have suction that builds inside of the socket itself, now this whole residual limb, this is all, you have linkage inside, inside the entire surface area of the prosthetic socket, even up 
towards where the thigh is because this is where the seal is gonna be. So if you're very active, um, maybe doing high impact, high impact activities like running, the more high impact the, the activity is, the more likely it is you're gonna get movement inside of the socket. The suction uh, suspension can really help to minimize movement in the socket. Right. And to even enhance that suction suspension, so suction usually gets about one and a half inches of mercury of pressure um, with just a simple one-way valve. Um, there are times where, where maybe that even that's not enough and you really just need to, to really capture as much of the, the fit of the prosthesis as possible. So what we would do is we'd install an external vacuum pump on the prosthesis. What that does is either through an electronic pump or a mechanical pump, it draws air out of the socket all the way up to uh, 20 inches of mercury. Mm -hmm. So when you're using that, it, it not only does it push air out, but it also sucks it out so that there's just a very intimate bond between your limb and the socket. The theory is that it wicks moisture out of the residual limb mm -hmm. too, so it uh, can help with perspiration and things I like that. There are ways to wear the socket if you want that to actually work for you, um, but it can be done. Right. Then on a, still on the below the knee level, there is also anatomical suspension. So this isn't a traditional below the knee transtibial. This is called a Symes amputation. And in this style of amputation, um, th for this, this is a, called a test socket. And for this test socket, we've designed a door so this residual limb has, has a big ball on the end that's bigger than the midsection. And so the person opens the door, slides their limb through, comes down, and then once it's in there, and I, my arm's too big <laughs> to fit in there, but once it's in there, then the door would close. Um, this is a common sty uh, style of anatomical suspension. Also, there are custom stovepipe liners yep. that can be used that also do that provide anatomical suspension. This is really good. This is a very good, simple means of, of doing things when mm -hmm. there's enough shape in your limb that it'll hold everything on. There's less parts to go wrong. It's, it's not gonna be as hot because you're not wearing a liner. So mm -hmm. there are lots of advantages to this type of system as well. So with the stove pipe in comparison to this, you can imagine when this goes on, we have this surface area where the ankle comes out. So by capturing the small part of the residual limb inside of the socket, it helps to hold the prosthesis on. With a stove pipe, uh, you'll have a P-Lite, something made out of like a P-Lite like liner. A foam, like a foam. Or a, a foam type, which is anatomically made to the residual limb, but to get, so they can still get in and out of the socket, that's built up, so instead of having that, where that curve comes in and that follows the anatomical there, um, inside of the socket, it'll be anatomically correct, correct, but we'll build up the outside so it, we can have a socket, outer socket, that the liner can slide in and out of. And if you're not familiar with any of those, you know, feel free to ask your prosthetist questions about them. But again, keep in mind, there could be very sensible reasons why these may not be good options for you, or they may be good options right. for you. Uh, but communication with you and your prosthetist is what's really important. And what we typically find in, in, our, in our clinics is that we like to give people an opportunity to try the different types of suspensions. So mm. maybe your very first prosthesis will be fit with a pin style so that it's simple for you, it's, it's easy, it's repeatable, you can get into the habit of using your prosthesis without mm -hmm. having some of the problems that come with suction. Now you're, that preparatory prosthesis, the very first one you got, it's not fitting you anymore. So now what happens is we start fitting for a new prosthesis. Well, this would be a great time to try suction. So we'll mm -hmm. try that, we'll let you give the feedback. I mean, we can predict maybe what we think, but people surprise us all the time. Yeah. And we're, we, we, we get a lot of preconceived notions, but we try not to let those inform how mm -hmm. we provide our care because ultimately it's, it's what, what works for you in the middle of the night. It's what works for you yes. when you're in shopping in the mall and all of a sudden you need to stop and make a stock ply change or it's like why we're saying, uh, we may have mentioned earlier that maybe suction would be better for somebody who wanted to run. So if you think running is more high, a higher impact activity, that would mean the suction is better than pin. No, that's not what we're right. saying. And there are people who would choose, who would not wear the suction to run and they may use the pin. What's best is what works best for you. And that may change over time if you're looking to gain things or whether you're going from your preparatory to 
uh, too definitive. But yeah, we're not saying one is better than the other. We're saying they're all options. Um, and if you have an opportunity to demo and try them out for yourself, um, then so be it. But if you're happy with what's, if you're not looking to gain any activity and you're be able to do everything that you want to do with what you have, you're probably going to find it's more frustrating. All of these take a while to adapt to. You know, going from one, so Nate and I were just having a conversation earlier today. When you change something with prosthetic feet, suspension, socket design, there's no such thing as the perfect formula. You always have to sacrifice something to gain something. And that's where determining what prosthesis works for, for be, best for you and your lifestyle is determined by what your activities are and what, you know, what your lifestyle is. Um, for example, that- you know, if you go with suction, we talked about earlier, I mentioned how you, the only linkage you have with, you know, the pin locking system is right here at the bottom. When you get into this with the suction, people hate wearing the sleeve. I mean, I, I, I wear a suction system. I wear vacuum systems. Um, they're great. I wouldn't give them up because I have the linkage in the socket that I need. But in the summertime, it's hot. Um, sleeves, they unexpectedly get holes in them. So they can be right. unreliable. And then all of a sudden, if you're on vacation and you didn't take an extra sleeve with you and you have pistoning inside of the socket, where right. some people might feel this is more reliable right. for that reason. Like this, this would be a good choice for running, but it'd be a bad choice for kneeling. So kneeling puts a lot of pressure on, yeah. on the trim line here. It would mean lots of holes in the suspension sleeve. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of different jobs re- require carrying things or doing things like that. Yep. There could be lots of reasons why the suspension sleeve just doesn't work for you. Yep. So if you have any questions about, about any of these suspension mechanisms, whether it's above the knee or below the knee, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to explain, expand on what we explained and give some more information or feel free to call us directly at 810-733-3375 or 989-249-9400.